So you may notice I'm underexposed here and out of focus, don't worry. The R3 will catch that focus pretty quickly. I was two stops underexposed, here I am corrected. Notice that I still have detail in the trees. I try to expose for the highlights and then pull up the shadows. You'll notice also I did the same thing with the red. Looking at the side by side, you can see that honestly, I was able to pull up a decent amount of shadow detail, but maintaining those those highlights and the shadow detail proved to be more of a challenge with the red than it did with the Canon. Ideally, you wouldn't shoot this way. You would have additional light lighting your face. You could expose for the background, but then that additional light brings up the levels of the shadows giving you a decent all-around exposure. This is the ideal way of doing it. And then there's a couple of ways of going about that. Here's the same scene again, shot with the Canon. The Canon, I think, lets in more light. It seems a lot brighter than the red. It will be more forgiving in low light. And I think it will be more forgiving in scenes like this where you need to pull up those shadows. It just seems to have a bit more latitude in the shadows for sure. There's a couple of ways of going about evening out a shot like this. And one of them would be to tint those windows behind me. I didn't do that in the shot. I did not tint the windows. And another thing of course would be to just add additional light. You're almost always better off doing that than relying on the camera to save you. And here's a side by side. This is the red versus the Canon. The lighting conditions are, believe it or not, identical. It's just how each camera can deal with it and how much you're able to pull back. I do notice that the red has a slightly different tone. And here again, that same shot with the red. Now I said that I wanted to also show you some iPhone footage. I've saved it to the end. Here is that iPhone footage. Now in this shot, this is the, the equivalent to not being lit. So I noticed with iPhone footage, smartphone footage in general, you have to throw a lot of light at it. I think that's kind of true for the red too, but even more so, for those tiny little sensors in your smartphone. Well, here is the same shot, but with a little light thrown at it. And it's literally a little light. The light is very small. And with just that, it's able to balance out much, much nicer and become a much more usable scene than would have been without any light. Well, that's about all I have for today. But I wanted to get this video out there for those of you that have requested it. I'll catch you next time.